Hi guys, I'm Randy and today on BRS TV we're getting an in-depth look at the Aquatech Booster Pump Kit to increase the pressure on your RODI unit and improve its performance. In one of our earliest BRS TV Investigates episodes, we set out to test the effectiveness of an RODI unit with a single 75 gallon per day membrane at pressures ranging from 10 psi up to 90. With our Minneapolis tap water, we found that increasing the water pressure alone was able to significantly increase how much good product water we could make in a single day, as well as increase the RO membrane's ability to remove TDS. The higher the pressure, the more water we can make in 24 hours at lower TDS levels coming out. So what does that mean for your RODI unit? Well, if your house pressure is below the minimum operating pressure of 50 PSI, you may not only be making less than the labeled 75 gallons per day, but you could also be limiting the RO membrane's true potential at removing even more TDS from your tap water, which could also save your DI resin from being consumed more rapidly. So how do you know if you need a booster pump kit? The first thing you'll want to do is find out what pressure is going through your RODI unit when it's producing water. If you don't have a pressure gauge, you could always add one to your system for less than 20 bucks, which can serve several functions. At an absolute minimum, you could operate your RODI unit as low as 40 PSI or maybe even 30, but it does come at a cost of max performance. In most cases, if you're at or below 50 PSI, you may want to look at boosting your pressure to get the best efficiency from your filter unit. On the other side of that, in order to properly operate the booster pump, you will need a minimum of 20 PSI. You may be enticed to increase your performance by adding a booster pump kit if you're in the 50 to 60 PSI range. This is a possibility, however, you may have to implement additional pressure reducing accessories like this one from Watts in order to scale back the increased pressure through your system and help you stay within the recommended pressure of around 75 PSI. Here are some of the accessories available to use with the Aquatech booster pump kit. The first is the auto flush flow restrictor, which can replace your existing flush valve and automatically power flush the system when it first turns on and again for about 18 seconds every hour during operation. This not only helps to prolong the filter life, but also saves you the hassle of remembering to flush the system before and after use. You could also install an inline strainer like this one from DM Fit, which includes the quarter inch push connect fittings and a removable 150 micron screen. This is used in order to prevent the booster pump from potential wear and tear from larger debris in the source water. Outside of that, if your RODI unit didn't come with a pressure gauge, you could always install one before the RO membrane, which will not only help to dial in the operating pressure for your system, but also serve as an indicator of when the sediment filters are becoming clogged and need to be replaced. When you get the booster pump kit, it'll come with three parts, the pump, power supply, and pressure switch. The pump operates at a pretty low amperage and typically draws less than 2 amps during operation. The pump itself may not be completely silent, but it does include a flex mount base plate to help absorb vibrations while operating, which can really help to dampen noise. Next, you'll find the power supply that powers the pump as well as pressure switch and other accessories. The power cord and power adapter lengths are each about 70 inches long, which should give you about 150 inches of total stretch to reach your booster pump. One quick note, the transformer is included with the booster pump kit, however you can use it separately with just the pressure sensor and auto flush flow restrictor if you didn't need the increased water pressure from the booster pump. The last piece to the booster pump kit is the pressure switch, which electronically tells the booster pump to shut off when the reservoir is full. In order to utilize this function, you'll need to install a float valve on your containers, and once the container is full, the booster pump will continue to run and build pressure within the lines. The pressure sensor will activate at 40 psi back pressure and send the signal to the pump to shut down. Before installing the booster pump kit to your system, you'll want to identify where you'll be installing the pump and the pressure sensor. The pump should be installed on the red line or source water line coming into the RODI unit. On a side note, the pump can vibrate during operation, so it may be best to secure it to a wall, a separate mounting board near the RODI unit, or even underneath the sink counter. The pressure switch, however, should be installed on the product water line or blue tubing after the last stages of the unit. The cord connection between the pump and pressure switch is only about 43 inches, so be sure to choose a location where they'll be able to reach each other. Now that we've identified where we'll be connecting the pump and switch, let's get them installed. First, we'll want to mount the booster pump, and you'll notice a flow indicator arrow on top, which runs from right to left. 
With the pump mounted and the water turned off, I can clip the source water line with a pair of tube cutters and insert them into the push connect fittings. One important tip to mention, you'll want to cut the tubing as clean and straight as possible to create the most watertight seal. Now you can do the same on the blue product water line for the pressure switch, and with this one the direction you install it is not important since it only senses back pressure within the lines. Now you can turn the water back on and check the connections for any leaks. If it looks good, connect the pump and the switch together, then bring in the power supply and connect it as well. If your reservoir is empty, you should instantly hear the booster pump turn on, see your pressure gauge increase, and you're ready to go. Let's talk about using and dialing in your booster pump kit. As I mentioned before, we recommend 75 PSI for the best balance of performance, water production rates, and for the protection and longevity of some of the filters and components of your RODI system. There's not much maintenance for the booster pump kit, however you can help prolong the pump's life by installing a strainer before the inlet side to catch any larger particles within the lines that could potentially wear on it. Along with that, I also like to install a push connect ball valve after the pressure switch so I can periodically check to make sure that it's functioning normally and signaling the pump to shut off. Thanks for watching, and if you have any more questions that we didn't answer here, feel free to give us a call, send us an email, or hop on a chat. See you next time on BRS TV.